All right, I'd like to call upon stage uh, Ganesh Sani. Ganesh is the team lead of Solution Architects at AWS. Uh, he has seven years in experience in AWS and has worked with customers on their overall journey. He has received, uh, he has uh, 13 uh, awards from uh, Amazon, and he has worked as a full stack developer at National Informatics Center, Geeks for Geeks, RBT Technologies, and is also a competitive programming author at Hacker Earth. He's also told me that he loves going clubbing and dancing. So if you can find him during the break, please give him great recommendations in Kochi. With a loud round of applause, can we have on the stage Ganesh, please? Namaskaram, everyone. Uh, so uh, that was a confidential thing, Ramesh, that I told you. You shouldn't have told uh, that to everyone that I like to party. My throat is a little messed up, so it's not because I partied hard yesterday, it's, it's because of uh, some water issues anyways. So hi everyone, uh, myself Ganesh, as uh, Ramesh introduced. Uh, Community Day Kochi has been something that's, that's very close to my heart. And when, uh, Dijesh, Dij 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 Anna, where are you? Dijesh, okay. So when Dijesh uh, uh, actually told me that uh, they are planning for Community Day Kochi, I was like, I really want to meet this vibrant crowd. And I may not be as good looking as Sarika here, but I can assure you that during this session for the next 20, 25 minutes, you're going to learn something, at least something from this session. This session will have something for every one of you. Be, you, you can be an expert on Generative AI, you can be a noob on Generative AI, you can be a beginner on Generative AI. If you concentrate for the first five or 10 minutes, believe you me, you will be at par with a lot of folks who, who, who perceive themselves as a Generative AI expert. First of all, am I audible at the back? Everyone? There? Okay, perfect, cool. Uh, let's, let's, let's get started. So for, for the next uh, 25 minutes, we are going to discuss about Generative AI and how you can actually use AWS as a cl cloud provider for your application and to integrate Generative AI to the applications. But before that, let's, let's go cloud agnostic. Let's, let's not discuss about any cloud provider, not even AWS for that matter. Let's first discuss little basics about Generative AI. And, and it's okay if you don't know about AI. With a raise of hand, how many of us are aware with the basics of AI, machine learning, generative AI? Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you questions, so you can be honest. Okay, cool. I'm assuming that the rest of, okay. Who, are, who all are not aware of the basics of AI and ML and generative AI? Okay, so the rest of the folks who didn't raise the hand, I should I assume that all of us are introvert, including me, by the way. Cool, uh, so moving on. Uh, Let's get started with Generative AI. What does Generative AI mean? It's, it's basically a technology through which you can create new content. Content can be image, content can be uh, you know, videos, or content can be audio, whatever you want. That kind of a content, if you want to generate, that's, that's something that Generative AI can actually help you across. But before we delve into Generative AI, let's try to understand what are these terminologies. I mean, you will see a lot of these kind of words coming across in sessions, in upcoming sessions, in general also. And when I, I actually came into this AI, ML, Generative AI kind of concept, this was very confusing for me. So I've summed it down to very, very basic, very, uh, you know, very easy uh, manner so that you understand the difference between all these four terms. So let's get started with the artificial intelligence. Don't look at the slide, you can look at me. I am I'm still good looking. Uh, you can look at me, I'm going to explain that in a very basic manner. When I say artificial intelligence, it means human intelligence, but artificial. What, me, what it means is, is ba it's basically an umbrella of multiple technologies. Technologies like machine learning, deep learning, generative AI. It's an umbrella of these technologies which can help you mimic a human intelligence. And a human intelligence can be as basic as an if-else statement for the folks who know programming, right? Or it can be as basic, a, basic as, should I allow a person inside the door or not? That's as basic of an intelligence as, as it can be. And it can be as complex as, you know, you writing a, a statement like create a image of, uh, of multiple uh, horses running on a sea and it generates an image. It can be as complex as that. So the entire umbrella of all these things is called as artificial intelligence. Within artificial intelligence, we have a new, we have another concept which is called as machine learning. Let's break it down. Machine learning, a concept where your machine learns something through an input and through an output. Let me give you an example. You basically create a technology or you create a model or you create a function which learns from input and output. 
and you pass even numbers and odd numbers. Whenever there is an even number, you say the output is true. Whenever you say the, the, the number is an odd number, you say, uh, you, you, you say that the output is false. In that case, the machine learning model, after a certain period of time, will automatically learn that whenever this model is passed an even number, it gives a true or a false. And whenever it, it is passed with an odd number, it gives the opposite answer to it. That's called as machine learning. It can be very simple, it can be very complex. That's machine learning. So with a raise of hand, how many of you believe that machine learning is an AI technology? Okay, how many of you don't believe that machine learning is a part of AI, artificial intelligence? Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, whatever we are discussing in these three things is actually within the artificial intelligence umbrella. So whatever I'm discussing, machine learning, deep learning, generative AI, all of this is inherently called as artificial intelligence. When a machine learning model learns, that if the input is even, I should give true. Whenever the input is odd, I should give false. That's automatically a human intelligence, right? And when the machine is trying to mimic a human intelligence, it's called as AI. So whenever a person tells you that, hey, this is a machine learning model, you can, you can automatically assume that it is also a part of artificial intelligence. Now let's move on to the next part, which is called as deep learning. When I say deep, it means deep, right, multiple layers, like, like C has a lot of depth, right? Similar to that, when you have multiple layers of functions and you pass an input to that, uh, you know, layers of functions and, and you create an output, that is called as deep learning. It is similar to machine learning, but it has multiple layers, multiple neural networks. Don't worry if you're not aware of neural networks. Just consider it like a function. It can be a function of, uh, you know, y is equal to mx plus c if we are from the math background, right? Any such sort of a function is basically a neural network. So whenever you are passing an input through multiple functions or multiple neural networks, multiple layers of these kind of functions, that's called as deep learning. Again, deep learning is going to be a part of machine learning. Both machine learning and deep learning are also an AI technology. As simple as that. Cool, let's move on to the generative AI piece. When I say generative AI, it's basically very large models. Very large models called as foundational models, which we'll discuss in the later on slides, but very large models taking an input and giving you an output. That's, that's what a, a generative AI can actually do for you. And input, input can be a query, input can be an image based on you know, whatever you're generating. And we'll also discuss about foundational models where we'll in depth discuss about what kind of foundational models are available out there. Okay, before we move further, anyone here who still has confusion in terms of difference between artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, generative AI, I'm going to ask questions. So if you, if you still have doubts, you should just, just do a little bit of a raise and I'll not point you. Okay, cool, I'm assuming everyone knows it now. Now let's try to understand the difference between a traditional ML model and a foundational model. These models are not the actors and actresses that you see. These models are basically techniques or technologies through which you can actually help the machine learning or the deep learning or generative AI through the stuff. From this screen, right, uh, you see traditional ML models to the left of your side and to the right of your side you have foundational model, right? What is the one difference that you see in both these images? Anyone wants to try? I'll give you my, my okay, fine. <laughs> I wanted to gift you something, but no worries. Yes. Perfect. As the individual rightly mentioned, on the left-hand side screen, you see labeled data. On the right-hand uh, figure, you see unlabeled data. When I say labeled data, if you remember my previous example, right, we were labeling the data even number and true, odd number and false. Just imagine doing it for petabyte scale of data, maybe 100 petabytes or even larger kind of a data. It's, 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 it's going to be very difficult for you. You'll, not, you'll need a lot of human uh, involvement. You'll, you'll need to specify each or label each data that you're sending to the machine learning model, right? Try to imagine a machine learning model which can actually take an unlabeled data, maybe web pages or, or you know, plethora of articles and it automatically tries to understand those articles, convert them into, uh, you know, machine, understandable technology, which is called as, you know, embeddings for that matter, but tries to convert that into those kind of things which can automatically generate contact, con content. In that case, you wouldn't have to manually objectify or manually 
label each and every input, right? So on the right hand, uh, right -hand side uh, uh, image, you see uh, foundational model. The difference between foundational model and the traditional model is foundational model can be trained on unlabeled data as compared to the normal traditional machine learning model where you have to label each and every input. So thus, foundational model is a very scalable or a very easy manner for you, or I should say comparatively easy manner for you to, to create generative AI application. You can have a foundational model, you can create a foundational model, you can utilize other foundational model, you can pass on unlabeled data, you can store it in a bucket or you can store it wherever you want and it automatically tries to understand that data, tries to understand the input that you pass. And once the foundational model is trained through that unlabeled data, it can help you do tasks like content generation, text generation, summarization, Q&A, chatbot and so on and so forth. So uh, everyone clear with this machine learning model versus foundation model? So when I say machine learning model, it can be NML, it can, machine learning, it can be a deep learning, but when I say foundational model, it's generative AI. Everyone is clear till th this point? Okay, one difference we missed. What is the other difference that you see in the screen? Anyone wants to try? Yes. Yeah, partially, uh, partially right, but just to clarify, on the left hand side image, if you see, there is a different machine learning model for individual tasks. But if you see on the right hand side, there is one foundation model which can actually do multiple tasks. That's another benefit for you when it comes to foundation model. You can use the same foundation model to do multiple tasks as compared to a traditional ML model. A traditional ML model will give you the output based on, for example, we discussed about even odd numbers, right? The output there will be just classification of true and false or classification of even and odd numbers. Whereas in foundation model, you can do 10 tasks or you can do multiple tasks through one single foundation model itself. Okay, let's move ahead. Cool, and just to give you a graphical representation, I know uh, speaking is, is not always something that we all remember as humans, right? So just to give you a very crude, very basic kind of a differentiation between ML deep learning and generative AI, if you see the first, first figure, right? There is a simple input, uh, even odd, and there is a simple output, true and false, as simple as that. That's called as machine learning. But in deep learning, as you can see, there are multiple layers within the middle figure that you see, right? That's called as deep learning. That also means that deep learning is also a part of machine learning. If you increase the layers, if you make the input complex, it basically means that it's a deep learning model. But when it comes to foundational model, it's even more complex input, it's even more complex output, and there are even more layers or even more neural networks, basically transformers for the folks who are from the AIML background, but even more uh, complexity integrated into the foundational model itself. That's, that's called as foundation model. That's a visual representation of what we discussed so far. Cool, uh, moving ahead. Okay, one thing, so if you see on the screen, all of this is called as artificial intelligence. Everyone clear to this point? Perfect, the next few slides are going to be cakewalk for you. So if you have understood everything till now, it's, it's going to be relatively easy for you. So let's, let's try to understand the type of foundational model before we actually discuss about the services and the things that you can use for your end user, for your own company and so on and so forth. So if you see on the screen, right, the first foundation model is basically taking a text input and generating a text output. Summarize this article. It's, 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 it's basically taking a text which is an article and generating a text. So it's a text to text foundation model. If you see on the next uh, uh, foundation model, it's basically text to embedding. Okay, so this may not be as precise of a definition of embedding, but I'll give you a very basic, uh, you know, meaning of embeddings. So embeddings is like a vector or an array. How many of us understand array from programming, array or dictionary or something of that sort? Okay, perfect, I think almost all of us understand. But it's basically a machine format of, of multiple objects, right? It's, it's basically an array. So when we say embeddings, it's a machine understandable array or a machine understandable vector for that matter. So if you just want to convert a text to embedding, that also model is available. What applications would we actually use for text to embedding? Anyone wants to try? I mean, text to text makes sense, right? If you want to generate article, if you want to summarize an article, yeah, text to text. Where can we actually use text to embedding? Anyone wants to try? Sorry? 
Um, yeah, I mean, large language model is, is like a foundation model itself, but what are the use cases or what are the examples where you'll use text to embedding? Anyone wants to try? Can be, uh, but let me give you a, a very basic example for that matter, right? Search. Amazon is doing search, right? Or we all do searches, right? When we do searches, uh, basically a seller is, is putting their product on the Amazon portal or any e-commerce portal, right? And just imagine if you have billions of products, right? All these billions of products, their, you know, in integrate details and so on and so forth. That is a text input that we are sending across to a particular model, right? And if we convert that text to embeddings, next time a person is coming or next time is a person is searching something or we want to recommend something to a person, the, the machine learning model can just look at the embeddings that were converted from the text. The text is something that human is giving to, to, to the e-commerce portal or Amazon for that matter, right? For example, I have this mic, for, uh, I have this clicker for that matter, right? I submit in Amazon that, hey, this is a clicker, and I give an article of description, this clicker is the best in the world, uh, you know, world's best technology, and, and some, you know, uh, weasel words for that matter, right? And there is another user which says, hey, this is a clicker, it'll help you click. Both are the same definitions, right? But then again, a text to embedding model will actually help you convert that text to embeddings. Basically classifying both the clickers in one category or both the clickers in one vector for that matter, right? That's called as text to embedding. Once you have all those embeddings, you can easily perform things like sort or search or, or recommendation for that matter, personalization for that matter. That's called as text to embedding for that matter. Again, you can use, as, as Ma'am was really, you know, uh, correctly mentioning, you can use text to embedding and then embedding to text. That's also very well possible. Every foundational model will have input to embedding, embedding to, uh, you know, output. That's, that's how a foundational model is built. But, you know, you can do that as well. The, the next model is text to image. You, you give a text, a photo of astronaut riding a horse on Mars. Very well possible, right? And by the way, you can actually go to Amazon services and, and I'll, I'll show you the service as well, where you can test it out, try it out. There is a playground. You can just type on your query and it will generate output. So there is a text to image. You can see text is being passed and image is being generated. Then we also have image to image. For example, if I give an image and I tell the, the foundation model, hey, unblur this image. We have a lot of startups online, right? You can go to uh, any search engine and you can type, hey, you know, unblur my image or optimize my image or remove this object from my image. All of that is something that relates with image to image foundation model itself. Then we have multi-model where we pass in a video, we pass in an audio, we pass in a text and we try to generate multiple stuff or a single stuff like a video, audio and so on and so forth. For example, I'm passing a video and I'm telling them, hey, optimize this video or remove this particular person, he's not that good looking or she's not that good looking and I try to remove them from a particular video, that's called as multi-model for that matter. Cool, that's more on the basics of generative AI, foundation model, machine learning, deep learning, AI, so on and so forth, right? Now let's try to understand what AWS, a sponsor for this, this particular event, has in terms of offering you or your company for your end clients. What does AWS provide you or why should you actually consider AWS for your generative AI applications, for your generative AI needs for that matter? Let's get started, right? So first of all, um, machine learning innovation is at Amazon's DNA. We have been in, into this machine learning thing from a long time. I would say longest when it compares to a lot of uh, the other cloud providers for that matter. But from a long time, we have been into the, into the uh, you know, you can say market when it comes to machine learning, right? We have multiple products that you can, within a minute, sell on Amazon.com that uses machine learning model. Our warehouses use machine learning. There are multiple packages that are being packed automatically. How many of us have used Alexa? Okay, fine, perfect. I was expecting a few more hands, but uh, no worries. So uh, Alexa is also a type of machine learning, a type of AI, right? Whenever we talk about human intelligence, it's called as artificial intelligence, right? Then, uh, you know, there are multiple walkout technologies on airport that are actually using Amazon's machine learning for that matter. Uh, you know, you just go to the airport, it scans you automatically, it, it scans you from, from Aadhaar card or whatever it is for that matter, and it gives out the results, it authenticates you or authorizes you to actually go inside. Those kind of things also use machine learning for that matter. 
Okay, and this is the reason more than 100,000 of customers are actually using AWS for machine learning for that matter, right? And all these case studies are something that are available online for you. You can read them. If you want a personalized case study, you can also connect with me offline. Would be happy to have the chat with you. Couple of uh, value proposition things when it comes to AWS, right? The first thing is experience. More than 20 years of experience when it comes to AWS and Amazon of AIML that we can actually pass on to you as, an, as, as a benefit to you as a customer, right? More than 100,000 of customers, uh, you know, we have learned through the needs, we have learned through the requirements, what our customers actually need. We have created services, we have created purpose-built offerings for you that you can actually use. Second thing is fle flexibility, right? I discussed about foundational model, right? I'm sure there'll be multiple customers who will be there from FinTech background, multiple customers from healthcare background, multiple customers from gaming background, right? Uh, for example, I have a gaming foundation model, right? I have a model which has been trained on multiple articles of gaming itself, right? Uh, PUBG or, I, sorry, I don't remember a lot of games. I used to play Call of Duty and all, if anyone is aware of those games. Uh, but yeah, those kind of games, right? If, if, if a foundation model is trained on those kind of games and you are trying to use the foundational gaming foundation model to a healthcare foundation model, do you think it will generate right outputs or it will generate the appropriate outputs for you? It might, but there are chances it might not. It might not generate appropriate outputs. For example, it might say, follow me, uh, get the handgun, or lie, I don't know, whatever it is. The slangs that I use in gamings, you wouldn't actually need them in your healthcare prescriptions, right? Or you wouldn't actually need them in the healthcare use cases that you need. You basically need to give some kind of a training to the foundation model that, hey, boss, you are trained on a lot of stuff, but when I tell you the output, output should be in this format, or output should have these kind of, you know, uh, things like, hey, there is a burning sensation, I should, I should use paracetamol for that matter, or whatever it, it is for that matter, right? A foundational model is purpose-tuned or fine-tuned for that particular use case. So there are multiple foundational models, and each foundational model has different specification. A couple of foundational models will be very large, they'll have a lot of, input size that you can pass into it, the quality will be good, a couple of them will be cheaper for that matter. So having a flexibility of choosing the right foundational model is very necessary. And that's something that AWS can easily provide you. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, the next thing is trust. So that's actually very important for our customers, right? Whenever customers are actually approaching us, they are like, hey, you know, our data is very important to us. So data protection, when you actually use the foundational model on AWS, you have full authority to restrict your data within your AWS account itself. We will not inherently use your data to train our foundational models. That will not be done. So that's a value proposition for our customers who have critical data, who have sensitive data for that matter. Cool, so we discussed about flexibility. There are multiple foundational models from a lot of providers like AI21 Labs, Anthropic, Stability AI, and even Amazon for that matter has its own uh, you know, uh, uh, foundation model titan for that matter. So we have flexibility when it comes to foundation model. Discussed about security, data protection, very important. Your data stays within your environment. It is not used to train the underlying foundational model, which can be used by other customers, right? So that's not going to happen. That's a very important fact for that matter. The most cost effective infrastructure, if you want to build your own foundational model, train your own foundational model, fine tune the model, most cost effective infrastructure is something that we can provide you through our, our customized uh, you know, instances that we provide so and so forth. And if you want to build your own foundation model, we also have SageMaker Jumpstart, SageMaker as a service, which can help you, help you build your foundational model. Then we also have solutions, pre-built solutions like Code Whisper, we're going to discuss, discuss about healthcare, Amazon Q, who all have watched reInvent for that matter? So Amazon Q as a service was, was released during reInvent, which is again, uh, you know, one of the solution from a generative AI perspective itself. Now these, these services that you see on the screen are basically the AI ML services that AWS provides you. And out of these, these are the services that can actually be used for your generative AI application needs. Don't worry if you're not able to see the screen, I know it's very trimmed, I just wanted to boast that, hey, there are a lot of services available, but we'll discuss one-on-one -on, -one on each of these services, right? Starting with SageMaker Jumpstart, right? If you want to have your own machine learning model, customize it, 
uh, fine tune it and, and you know, as a data scientist, you want to dig in deep from a machine learning model perspective, foundational model perspective. You want to use the pre-trained models or you want to have pre-built scripts, pre-built trainings, UI, API, all of that is something that's available in SageMaker Jumpstart itself, in the SageMaker service itself. So if you're an, if you're an expert, even if you're not, and if you want to have those kind of customization or, or have that kind of a deep uh, you know, uh, uh, control over your models, that's where you can actually use foundation models. So you can browse through multiple models, you can experiment, you can customize, and you can deploy through SageMaker in, itself. Then there are, a, there are various publicly available foundation models that are available in SageMaker Jumpstart. All of this is available online, so don't worry if you can't see the screen, AI21 Labs, Meta AI, Cohere, so on and so forth, all of these models are available. Coming to the next service, Bedrock, right? For the folks who just want to use it for their application, they don't want to have so much customization, they don't want to have all those integrate details, right? Just go to Bedrock, use the foundation model, use the API of those foundation model and integrate with the application very easily. That's where Bedrock comes into the picture. If you want customization, if you want to really have all that kind of control and want to do a lot of stuff, SageMaker is your thing to go. If you just want to have an easy way of using a foundational model, Bedrock is your way to go. So multiple foundational model available, all the things that we discussed earlier, data protection, security, so on and so forth, maybe after the session. All, all those kind of things are actually available through Bedrock itself. I've already been given a sign from the organizers that I have to wrap up soon, but don't worry, uh, we, we will cover all the details in the session itself. So multiple foundation about, uh, foundational models available in Bedrock as well. All of this is something that is available in Amazon, in Bedrock as a service itself. Cool, so foundation model can't do everything, right? Now, if you want an easier manner, we also have agents for Bedrock. Rather than you building all the APIs or you doing all the stuff, you can actually use agents for Bedrock to enable or, or, or orchestrate multiple tasks. Take data from your company, do this task or, or give the customization or, or you know, give this as an output or do this task, uh, you know, build CloudWatch metrics or whatever it is for that matter. Those kind of things can actually be done through agents for Amazon Bedrock. So making it even easier for you to integrate generative AI on your application itself. That's called as agent or that's, that's something that agents for Amazon Bedrock uh, as a service will help you. Then there are multiple customers who are already using Amazon Bedrock and multiple more customers which I've not referenced here but are available online. All of them have started or all of them are actually, uh, you know, very closely using Amazon Bedrock and SageMaker for that matter to, 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 gen to, ha to have generative AI in their applications itself. Your data is differentiator, right? Now, let's assume if you want to keep uh, your data in a private and secure manner, you can either use SageMaker, you can also use Bedrock to fine tune your model. All of that is something that inherently is available within Amazon itself. So your data is your data, none of my data. Sorry for the very bad pun. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, it, from a security standpoint, that's, that's a value proposition for you. Then we also have another integration, uh, uh, generative, uh, generative BI capabilities into Amazon QuickSight itself. So uh, just to give you an example, right? Amazon QuickSight is basically a BI tool. It can create charts, it can create graphs, it can you know, do a lot of stuff on plethora of your data, right? It can be Excel data, it can be S3 data, it can be multiple files for that matter. Now you also have generative BI capabilities in Amazon QuickSight. You can just write a text query that, hey, this is an Excel, it has multiple products. Give me the analysis of you know, which product I should be selling to the customer based on the you know, previous data. And that generative BI capability will actually help you give the answer. So now you don't have to actually read through the Excels or read through the graphs. This can be done through this, this feature that we have integrated in Amazon QuickSight. Another service that we have is AWS HealthScribe. So uh, this is a HIPAA compliant service that can help you enhance your cl clinical productivity, can, uh, can actually give you, uh, give, you, give you a lot of benefit, uh, you know, if, if you want to have, uh, uh, you know, note generation from your healthcare insights itself, right? If you want to generate a note, like a healthcare prescription for that matter, that's also available as a, as a generative AI service for that matter. The last service that we'll discuss, don't worry, please don't give me looks. Uh, I know we are delayed, but uh, just, just sorry for that. But yeah, Amazon Code Whisper is another service that we have 
uh, wherein you can generate your code. You can have multiple lines of code, multiple libraries of your code. Uh, our previous customer was showcasing multiple codes, multiple files, right? Imagine there is a code whisperer which can automatically create a function using other libraries that you have in your environment and really have contextual code generated for your application. And you can try it for free, by the way. So go to your system, integrate code whisperer for all those who are from the programming background and just start to build applications. You'll understand how it, easy it is. And last but not the least, global infrastructure, right? So we have, we have Trainium and we have Inferentia too. So all those people who are from machine learning background, data scientists, they can actually use this, these particular EC2 instances or instances to perform the machine learning tasks that they want to do. Create your own foundational model, just to go berserk into whatever you want and have a very cost optimized and performance efficient infrastructure for that matter. That's going to be the last section of my slide. I know everyone is looking at me uh, saying that, hey, this is already delayed to a manner, but don't worry. If you have any questions, sorry, I couldn't take your question, but if you have any questions, I'll be available throughout the day and we can have a chat and we can, uh, you know, whatever help you need, I'll be there for you. So thank you everyone. Thanks for listening to me and I'll, I'll pass it on to this.